Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 12th, 2022, around 1 10 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including a new tropical cyclone that could be forming in the Gulf of Mexico over the next day or two, and a look at when to expect the remainder of the hurricanes to be coming. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we have a couple of things occurring today. It is starting to become more active across the basin, and we noticed that today we have several areas that we will be watching for the next several weeks. First of all, in the Gulf of Mexico, we do have a very small disturbance, which is located about at the southwestern tip of Louisiana. This will be moving into portions of Texas over the next day or two, and will be bringing with it some heavy rainfall and the potential for some gusty winds. This could develop into a, a tropical cyclone, but a very small potential at that. We do have a pretty strong tropical wave moving off the coast of Africa today. This is in part with that monsoon trough. This is not expected to develop, but will be worth just keeping an eye on since it is August. But we have more coming down the pipeline, and we'll talk about that here in just a moment. So again, here's our area of interest in the Gulf of Mexico. Again, you can kind of see this whole broad area is kind of where the area of interest is. This will be moving into Texas over the next day or two. Development chances right now are still around about a 10% chance. We could see a little bit of an increase, and the hurricane hunters are scheduled to fly into this area sometime in the next day or so. And in the eastern Pacific Basin, we are still watching another invest out there. This has had its development chances lowered, suggesting that the tropical Pacific is becoming less favorable for overall activity as things begin to switch around to the Atlantic. But again, still a high probability of development, 70% as this moves generally towards the northwest over the next day or two, but uh, no threats to portions of Mexico or the Baja Peninsula at this particular point. Now, focusing on the Gulf of Mexico here, we notice that, again, we have a large area of disorganized shower and thunderstorm activity, partially responsible because of an old frontal system that came through. And what this is going to do here, this broad area is generating some mid-level vorticity, but it is not developing, developing any surface vorticity at the moment. Now, there are hints that a surface circulation is trying to form. We can kind of see that we do have the overall cloud pattern kind of curling in here, and some of these convective elements are trying to kind of wrap up here, suggesting that we could have somewhat of a semblance of a surface circulation trying to form within this region. If it does so, this will be kind of moving generally towards the west over the next day or two and impact portions of Texas, bringing with it some gusty winds and heavy rainfall. And that is really the extent of that. If we look at the GFS forecast on this particular storm here, we notice that again, the GFS 12Z run does try to amplify some of that vorticity as it approaches the coastline here sometime late tomorrow night or uh, on very early Sunday morning. This, again, will be bringing with it the majority of heavy rainfall to portions of south, uh, south and portions of central Texas. If we look at that relative humidity here, we notice that there is a little bit of a ball of, of enhanced uh, humidity, and that definitely suggests that we have more moisture in the atmosphere to kind of work with. So there might be enhanced rainfall, but that really is about the end of the story, not expecting anything really significant in terms of wind but certainly could see some flooding rainfall as we progress over the next couple of days for portions of Texas. Now shifting to the overall tropics and looking at the main development region and what lies ahead for the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. Let's look at the European forecast. This is the overnight run, the zero Z run valid for, uh, this is actually going to now be valid for 2 p.m. this afternoon. So again, what we have right now is we do actually have this tropical wave you can kind of see coming off the coast of Africa here. This is our system in the Gulf of Mexico, just to kind of point out some of the players. And this is actually the remnants here of Invest Area 97L that was going to have a chance to develop, but those chances have basically been shunted. Uh, but we noticed that in the European forecast, there is some enhancement of vorticity actually near the Cabo Verde Islands here with this uh, tropical wave, but not really anything substantial. We notice that again, there is some enhancement as well in the, in the Gulf of Mexico, but overall there is nothing really on the board through about the 22nd of August on the European operational. However, this is just one run of the European operational and to really look at how everything's playing out, let's look at the European ensembles. Now, 
I put a little bit more weight here on the European and you might be asking why. Well, that's generally because the European has been largely more representative of the overall environment. It's handled propagation dynamics from these convectively coupled Kelvin waves and the Madden Julian oscillation quite well. And therefore I put a little bit more faith in what the European is showing compared to the GFS because the GFS has just simply not really been the most reliable. It is starting to turn and cave towards the Euro. So that's kind of another reason why I, I sort of believe the Euro, but we notice that this is the ensemble mean sea level pressures and we notice that there's pretty much it's dead across the deep tropics for quite some time. And actually, even through about August 22nd, it's pretty quiet. We notice what actually starts to happen, though, by about the 22nd of August, though, we notice that there actually is some more areas of low pressure indicated by all these little red numbers in here. And so this indicates that there is generally lower than, uh, lower than average pressures across the deep tropics. And some of these uh, do represent tropical storm strength systems so from about 1,002 to about 1,005 millibars. Um, and we do notice that those actually increase in signal as we head throughout about, about the 27th of August. We do see an increasing signal for tropical activity. So what this kind of shows me is that the deep tropics are beginning to amp up. And the GFS ensembles actually... If you look at the uh, runs from a couple of, this is uh, the previous run, and we notice that, again, we actually do see some more amplification of tropical waves that come out of here in the main development region, maybe even some down here in the Caribbean as well. And this will kind of line up very nicely uh, with some of the forecasts that we've kind of been seeing. And uh, overall, there definitely does seem to be more increased potential out here in the MDR. And this goes about to the 15th of September. So we're definitely now starting to pick up increased signals in the models, uh, some very intense Cabo Verde hurricanes potentially. So as we've been talking about time in and time out, this is the time where things are going to begin to change and we're starting to see that play out already. Just a real quick look at that upper level wind environment because that is so important. We'll actually look at the ensemble version of that. And what we're going to be able to see here is that, again, the overall conditions are going to become generally more favorable. Uh, at the end of this run here on the European, we're still stuck kind of with this uh, tropical trough up here, this uh, tropical atmospheric trough, which is going to generate some wind shear across the tropical Atlantic, especially in the, the central and western parts of the MDR. But overall, if we have any strong hurricanes coming out through here, we'll definitely be able to erode that away. So we'll be kind of looking for everything, but right now, it seems like the base is basically loaded and uh, we will be talking about hurricanes in the near future. All right. So that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.